Adam here from DIYDork.com. Today I want to show you how we did a little bit of a makeover in our kitchen by installing butcher block countertops. So check this out. Alright, so before I put on my first coat of water locks, I'm actually going to go over the whole thing with my super fine grit uh, foam sanding block here. It's probably like a 250 or 300 grit. That'll make sure it's nice and smooth and it's not splintery or anything like that. And it'll be ready for the uh, water locks. Then, I'm going to go over the whole thing with one of these tack cloths to get rid of all the dust particles so they can actually start finishing it. Now that water lock smells really bad, so I'm going to make sure to open up a bunch of windows in the house. It's like a tongue oil with resin, so it kind of smells like oil and turpentine and just a real weird smell. But after a few hours, the smell goes away, and then the actual finish that's left behind is food safe. So it's pretty cool stuff. It just smells terrible for a while. Alright, so my plan is to put on one coat of water locks today after I sand it down. I'll let it dry, so this time tomorrow, after a full 24 hours, I'll put on a second coat do the same thing. Just put on a coat, let it dry. On the third day, I'll change it up a little bit. I'm going to go over the whole thing with this 400 grit sandpaper to make sure it's really nice and smooth. And then I'll tack cloth it, and then I'll put on the third coat. Then the same thing, I'll wait a full day, do that same process. Sand, wipe, put on new coat, and then I'll do that one more time until I have five full coats on here, so it should be nice and protected. And in the meantime, I could probably start putting some things back in the cabinets and in the drawers. I need to build some uh, end panels for the uh, ends of them. And then also I have that back panel there I need to put on. I have a pretty cool idea for that. They could be kind of interesting. And then once that fifth coat's on here nice and dry, I can finally put the sink back in. We have a new faucet from Ikea we're going to put in there. And then I will put in the uh, dishwasher as well. And I also have to hook up the line to the fridge. And uh, basically be ready to go. And then we'll probably baby it for a couple of weeks just to make sure that the finish gets nice and hard. And then it should be, be uh, protected really nice. And uh, unlike mineral oil, which you basically have to like once a month clean everything off the counters, uh, sand any spots where there's stains or whatever, put on a coat of the uh, oil, let it dry overnight, wipe it down, basically do that once a month forever. Uh, this stuff, it's kind of a pain in the butt because it takes a few days to put it on, but then you pretty much don't have to touch it until anything, you know, until it, like you get some wear spots or scratches. And then from what I understand, you can just sand it real quick and then, uh, you know, wipe it down and put on a coat or two in those spots. It'll self-level out and look really nice. So hopefully it'll uh, be nice and protected and a little bit less work than mineral oil. So anyway, let me get started on this and uh, get going. Alright, and here's the tops after five coats. Check out that shine. These are looking really, really nice. So uh, while the tops were drying, we loaded up the uh, drawers and the cabinets as well. We went ahead and cleaned everything out, got rid of some things and all that. So basically there was nothing else to do while the tops were drying. So now I still need to go ahead and put the dishwasher back in place and hook up all those goodies underneath, which was no fun. Slide the stove back into place and then also install the sink with the new faucet we picked up at Ikea get all that done and uh, then I'll show you how I'm gonna build the sides I think I have a pretty cool idea for that I also need to caulk the top when it's all said and done so let me go ahead and start doing all that Alright, check it out. We're just about there. I got the stove in place, the sinks in place with the new faucet. It's a lot nicer than the old one we had. It actually works. Our last one, it was really hard to pull out. The whole thing was kind of wobbly. But uh, anyway, the little one from Ikea, it was a cheap one, but it's still better than that uh, other one we had. Okay, and then also the uh, dishwasher's in place. Now, one thing I forgot to mention when I put in dishwasher is you kind of want a little bit of protection underneath the top. So, I just installed this little fixa strip from Ikea. It's basically a big sticker. It's about, what, three inches wide by however long that little white piece of paper is there. And uh, it just sticks to the bottom side of the uh, countertop, like you can see right here. And then what happens when you open the uh, dishwasher, if any steam comes out, it'll just kind of roll off of that instead of getting absorbed into the wood. 
Now my countertop does have three coats of clear underneath it, so it should be fairly protected. But if you're gonna just oil your top, usually you just oil the top and the sides and you wouldn't even bother with the bottom. So that bottom would be totally raw and could be uh, possibly soaking up you know, steam and things like that. So it, it could start to warp or whatever. So uh, this should help a little bit. Although uh, if you wanted to, you could even put like a full sheet of aluminum under there. That's the, you know, the size of the entire opening. That would probably help. And uh, anyway, I think the sticker will be fine for our uh, little purpose here. So anyway, uh, now I just got to work on the sides. I have a pretty cool idea. I think will work out real well and uh, just help finish them off. But put one here and then also back here just to cover up the whole part of the little peninsula here. So I'll do that next. All right, and then to make the panels to cover the back and the sides, what I'm going to use is some paneling that I found. And uh, this is actually cedar paneling. It's quarter inch thick and it has grooves cut every four inches so it has a nice even look and uh, of course I'll mount it horizontal so the lines will go along the uh, length of the peninsula there and uh, anyway since it's wood I'll have to prime it with some oil based primer to block out all the tannin so it doesn't bleed through and then we'll paint it gloss white. Now I also want to trim it out short of like a, a shaker cabinet so it'll just have a real thin piece of trim going around each of the little panels so for the end caps I'm going to use 1 by 4s because I have plenty of overhang to work with that so I can have a little bit thicker trim but then in the back that overhang is I don't have a whole lot there like maybe a half inch or so so I'm actually going to use a quarter inch piece of underlayment which is basically quarter inch plywood and uh, do, use it the same way I'm going to use the uh, 1 by 4s except it'll just be a lot thinner I'll just trim it down as well so uh, anyway I'll start cutting it down getting them built and put those up and show you what it looks like Alright, so check it out. Here's the kitchen all finished. After I put the side panels on, nailed them up, I filled in the holes with just a little bit of filler and then touched them all up with gloss white paint. And that looks really nice. It looks like a built-in, like it was always supposed to be here. I don't think I mentioned, but the sizes I used for the little trim pieces I cut, the upper trim and then the side trims here are three inches wide, but the lower trim is three and a half inches wide so that it blends in and matches the three and a half inch trim we have in the rest of the house but uh, anyway that was a little extra detail I don't think I mentioned earlier but they look really nice so the white bases mixed with the uh, wood tops definitely gives it that kind of rustic farmhouse look which is definitely very popular right now but I think it actually works for this house because we are in a barn shaped house so I think it makes sense and I think it will actually help with resell later down the line these are just a little bit nicer tops they look a little you know higher end than our uh, cheater concrete tops that were really starting to wear down and uh, I just think that uh, more buyers would be interested in what we have here than what we had before now we could have re uh, repaired the uh, concrete tops that we had and I think it would have not been too big of a deal but we've been thinking about putting these down for a while it was kind of the plan from the beginning but when we found the Ardex concrete countertop idea we decided to go with it at first just to try it out and it held up pretty nice and I still like the look of them. I, th I think I actually kind of prefer that gray with the waterfall a little more than this look. But like I said, I think in the long run this will end up working out better for us. But anyway, just check out that water locks finish. It's really nice and glossy, almost as glossy as the glass top of the stove. So they've been really easy to clean. Water beads up real nice, any spatter, anything like that, it just cleans up real easy. Also, I wasn't sure if I would like just our straight butt joints here but ended up not being a big deal at all especially with all those coats of water locks it really filled that in so if any crumbs or water gets in there it'll clean out real easy 
Same thing over here. I think it turned out pretty nice. All right, also we did keep our uh, regular uh, top mount sink that we had before. I know under mount sinks are really popular now and we were kind of thinking about maybe swapping to that. But the problem is that our cabinets here, when we uh, installed them, it's a little hard to tell, but can you tell how it's a little offset from the uh, window here? And when we uh, first put them in, we didn't realize that. And then we bought the sink because uh, it was really the only double sink we could find that fit in the width we had here. And we got really, really lucky. We did not plan this at all, but that sink where the faucet mounts happens to be exactly centered to the window. So that worked out great. So that's why we decided to keep this. Although we did replace that cheap uh, faucet we had with this one from Ikea that uh, is actually a, a lot nicer. It's sturdier. You can just tell it's better materials. The water runs better. Just everything's better about it than the cheap one we had. So we're happy with that as well. But anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I think the next project I have going on, I'm gonna take these shelves down that we're using. You can kind of see they're, they're a little too dark. They don't match anymore. Those have homemade wood stain on them, so they're kind of that like uh, deep reddish brown color. So I'm gonna take them down, sand them, try to get them down close to raw wood, and then probably just put some water locks on those as well so they kind of blend in. But that's something for the future. But for the most part, I'd say it is all done. Very functional, looks nice, looks a little bit better quality than what we had before, and they're definitely a lot easier to clean. So there you go. I know it's kind of a long little uh, series here, but I wanted to show everything involved just to just to have a lot of detail for anyone that might be interested in putting in their own. So there you go. Hope you like it. I know we like it and uh, turned out pretty cool.